Welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and along for the ride this week is Mitch Grawl and Dean Chambers. How you doing tonight, fellas? Very good. Doing good. All right. So we have wrapped up week 11, and uh, we are coming to that final turn um, to the season, to those final games. We have some teams that are starting to stand out. We have some teams that um, are still in the pack. And then we have the other teams that are just starting to plot for next season and get ready for the next season. So we're going to cover all of that. Uh, Our middle topic is going to talk about the competition within the league as we were talking in the pre-show. You have some teams that are on the lower end of um, their records, but they've been very competitive. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to go into our week 12 games. So if you guys are all set and ready to go, we are going to go ahead and jump right into it with our first game coming up from week 11. First one on the list We have Atlanta hosting Indianapolis and came up just short with Indy taking it 27 to 20. We're going to start off with you, Mitch. All right. Uh, Hey, everybody. Uh, Yeah, this was a tough game. Uh, This was one of our featured games on Friday Night Lights. And, uh, you know, I I will say that uh, for Atlanta, that's a loss defensively, you know, played well for a lot of the game. They, they, the big thing they had issue with uh, was stopping the run. Uh, they did uh, give up some, uh, the, what the Indianapolis to grind the ball some, which wouldn't have hurt them uh, so much, uh, except for the fact that they had two big turnovers um, in, in the game. Uh, one which was picked up and run back for a scoop and score about 40 or 50 yards and ended up being the difference. But uh, tight ball game, this those turnovers really ended up making making the difference, and uh, we'll see what Dean has to say. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, I think that was the news headline. Someone joked later on in the evening as they're watching other games. Newsflash, Atlanta just fumbled again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, brutal. A little bit of you know some rushing yards given up, which didn't help. But three different running backs fumbled in this game, and you know that just doesn't help. You look at the game stats: fumbles by three different running backs. One of them, I don't remember which one, was picked up by the defensive player and run back fifty or sixty yards, whatever it was, for a touchdown. That ended up being the score that made the difference. This game was fairly close, otherwise. The game actually picked my quarterback as player of the game in a losing effort because he did complete 24 out of 30 passing attempts for a touchdown pass and no interception. So the passing game was pretty good. The running game was a little bit lacking with only 84 yards, and my team gave up 182 rushing yards. So that kind of makes things tough. But that, that one key turnover that was run back for the touchdown ended up literally being the difference. The score was 27-20, so. Just a winning loss, though. I thought we had a chance to win. I was hoping we would and go to six and five instead of five and six. So, mm. all right. Next game up, we have the New York Jets hosting New England, and um, they the Jets do what the Jets do as they took this one forty nine to thirty. Dean. Well, you say the Jets do what the Jets do, but, you know, the Jets is something here that they generally don't do. They gave up 30 points to the Patriots. Yeah, true. New England, New England played tough in this game. New England had 413 yards passing in this game. And, uh, well, not a whole lot of rushing. It was mostly passing. That made it somewhat competitive. I'm, it's somewhat competitive. I mean, you know, you give up 49 points, that's not good. But, you know, they scored 30 and... That's uh, you know, we, that's much better performance by the Patriots than what we've seen in many of the recent Jets versus Patriots games between these two teams. So, Jets did win though, but they gave up a lot of score, and I'm sure I'm sure Thomas will be the first one to tell you that 
his defense shouldn't give up 30 points. Well, they shouldn't give up as many yards as they gave up also. They gave up like 400 and, uh, uh, what was it, over 420 yards, I believe. Uh, Virtually uh, all of it was good. Yeah. Uh, 13 rushing against the eight yards. Yep. So that's all awesome, basically. Yep. Mitch. Well, you know, uh, hey, that New England gets that 19 point loss of the moral victory. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the Jets are still pretty darn good, even when they have a bad game. So I'll leave it at that. All right. Next one up, we have Philadelphia uh, hosting Jacksonville and coming back with a 33 to, or going back into the win column with a 33 to 16 victory. Mitch. Yeah, this one, I, I was surprised. I've been giving uh, James a lot of crap here recently, uh, saying how embarrassed I was to, to lose to him, you know. Um, but this was a really good game for Philadelphia. Um, both sides uh, of the ball, both running and passing on the offensive side, uh, pretty clean. You know, they had to have one turnover, but uh, uh, just a really overall strong performance by uh, by Philadelphia and old, I mean, I never know who's going to play quarterback for them, but this week it was Ehlers, and, you know, he had a really strong game for them. So, um, you know, if Philadelphia plays like this, hey, you know, I'll quit uh, poking fun at James. So, what do you yeah. think, Dean? Yeah, this is a tough loss for Jacksonville. I mean, Jacksonville has had somewhat of an up-and-down season after a pretty strong start, but you know, it looked like Jacksonville was going to be a more competitive team this year, and I think some weeks they had been, but this was definitely a tough loss. And, uh, you know, Philadelphia had a little over 400 yards in overall offense. It wasn't that lopsided statistically, but, um, you know, the, they doubled up on the score, of course. So this is a tough loss for Jacksonville. Maybe uh, maybe they'll finish the season strong in the 4-7 and seven now. And, <laughs> Yeah, managed to finish somewhere near a 500 record, possibly. Uh, uh, well, I noticed George P., our favorite uh, rookie, one catch for seven yards. Uh, so they got to figure out a way to get their uh, top players, you know, in the, in the mix a little bit more. Yeah, they, they need more George P., definitely more George P. Uh-huh. All right. Next one up, we have Minnesota hosting Las Vegas. A very another close game for Vegas as they came up just a bit short, losing this one, twenty to seventeen. Dean. Yeah, like I said in the pregame show, the Raiders are the best three and eight team. I think out of their eight losses, I think like five or six of them are by one score or less. And here, Minnesota was the hottest team in the league going into this game. I mean, they've beaten, they've beaten Chicago. They're leading the division. I mean, Minnesota, the last five weeks, has played as well as any team in this league has played. So, you know, the Raiders came close. They, they, you know, they almost pulled off the upset win here. I mean, the, the stats are almost equal in this game. They're both around 350 yards total offense. So, you know, the score is that close. They just didn't quite do it, but they almost did. Uh, I still keep saying that, uh, you know, the rest of the season, going into the next season, look for the, the Raiders to be improved. I know I keep saying that, and, well, how can you say that they're, you know, they're 3-8, and eight, but, uh, again, they're the best 3-8 and eight team in the league because I believe six of those losses are one score or less. Pretty close. All right. Mitch. Yeah, it's uh, Minnesota tends to have games where – it's ugly, but they win. And this was one where there were some ugly spots, but overall they they got it. They pull it out, and that's what good teams do. They uh, they pull out those close, ugly, uh, grind them out games. So uh, that's why they're in first place. All right. Next one up, we have Houston hosting Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. I guess you I I don't know if you'd call this one an upset or a mild upset. I don't know we'll we'll discuss it a little bit better. Um but they definitely went into Houston and uh 
got out of there with a 31 to 17 victory. Dean. Yeah, Pittsburgh has been looking pretty good this season, winning a number of games and some tough games. And I think this is a game where you can say Pittsburgh is the real deal here, and they played pretty solid, and they jumped out to a lead. We watched this game at Discord. You know, Pittsburgh jumped out to a lead early in this game, and 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 they managed to hold on, and they played strong throughout the whole game, and they did that with, with some uh, pretty solid passing. You know, Watson was 12 of 17, not a lot of passing, but good passing, 71% completions with a touchdown pass. Mayfield for two interceptions that didn't help it as well. And uh, also, uh, you know, Pittsburgh did some pretty good, pretty good rushing in this game as well. And just pretty good balanced offense in general. And uh, they got the, they got the job done. All right. Mitch. Yeah. Pittsburgh jumped out early 20, 21, nothing in the first quarter. And uh, like Dean said that, uh, you know, couldn't, you know, couldn't get, uh, couldn't catch back up. Uh, a couple of early, those early first uh, quarter turnovers really hurt those two picks that um, Dean mentioned. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think one was like inside the 20 and the other one was inside the 50, which led to two quick touchdowns for Pittsburgh. And I won't even go into that 93 yard touchdown pass, which should have been a penalty. But anyway, no, uh, did Pittsburgh uh, play played uh played uh, strong and as I said when we played the first time uh, if you're playing Pittsburgh you better you better bulk up prepare get ready uh, because it's Pittsburgh they're they're playing they're playing good ball they're they're not they're not these aren't fluke wins they're getting they're they're playing really well so hats off to Steelers all right Next game up, we have L.A. hosting Denver, and Steve and his team walked away with a 16-13 to victory. Mitch. Yeah, um, big win for L.A. is that got them back over 500, uh, you know, continuing to mess up the tanking that uh, Steve wants to do. But Denver... Similar to what uh, Dean was talking about, we'll talk about this more of this in the second segment. Uh, Denver, <laughs> Denver might be the best five and six team that we've ever seen in this league, especially for a, a rookie coach. Uh, but uh, you know, both teams uh, played strong on the defensive side, holding down their opponent, uh, obviously. Uh, but um, big game and just another another. Example of why the NFC uh, AFC West is just so hard to 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 win. Um, anyway, Dean, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I had faith in Steve's ability to tank, so I put a lead <laughs> in this, this, this past week, and, and my lead pipe block was actually finally not a lead pipe curse. This is a close game. It was very tough. They, again, the the the. the the stats aren't all that aren't, aren't all that much different, you know. Chargers at two seventy and the Broncos at two nineteen, and it was pretty close overall. But uh, the home team did manage to to win. The Chargers are six and five now, and looking like they have a, a good shot at getting into postseason. And remember, you know, this was not only the team that won that Super Bowl over my team in two thousand forty one. Uh, this is the team that's. I believe knocked the ja- the Jets out of the playoffs once, maybe a couple times. So, uh, you know, when Steve gets in the playoffs, this team is competitive and can beat anyone. All right. Next up on our list here, we have Washington hosting New York as they took this one 24 to three. Dean. Yeah, I'm not sure what what the Giants were doing in this game. They had some turnovers that didn't help them. Two fumbles that were both lost. And uh, Jones didn't, Daniel Jones didn't throw any interceptions this game, but he didn't pass a lot. He only passed 18 times and completed nine of them. And uh, the running game only produced 47 yards of rushing. Um, I don't know how you compete against any team, let alone Jerry's Redskins, with those kinds of numbers. And uh, the score reflects it. I mean, three touchdown win by Washington. This 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 is pretty brutal for the Giants. 
Mitch. Yeah, the Giants had me believing. I think they've won, or they've scored 50 in two games this year. And I was like, you know what? Hey, I think uh, these guys are going to, they were they're better than I thought. And I, you know, put my, my chips in on them. And then after I did that, I, I, I learned from a very reliable source that the entire coaching staff of the Giants uh, was hospitalized the entire week. And so there was like no preparation at all for this game. And you can tell by the results that, uh, you know, not a, not a whole lot uh, uh, went into that game plan. So uh, thanks a lot, Giants. You sucked me in and then you, <laughs> and then you blew it. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, Mark. All right, next one, Chicago hosting Seattle. And I think uh, for a team that you said that everybody was out sick, I think Seattle just didn't show up. Only thing, only um, silver line is that it wasn't in Seattle, so they wouldn't have to worry about all the people out there with bags on their head. So uh, Chicago took this one 42-9, to nine. Mitch. Well, you know, like Dean said, you know, Vegas is the best three and eight team uh, in the league. Um, well, Seattle is not the best two and nine, <laughs> two and nine team in the league. Oh, uh, another tough or tough loss for Seattle. I know the coaching staff uh, is um, is working hard to correct some uh, some things uh, with their with their team, but this was not the week that. Uh, that 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 had happened. Uh, Chicago got themselves back on track after, I believe, a two-game losing streak for them. I could be wrong, but um, they got themselves back on track. So, uh, Dean, what do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why the score was this way. I mean, the the the, the stats weren't that lopsided: 353 to 313 in passing and 444 to 396 overall in yardage. Although Seattle did, uh, did yeah, those turnovers didn't help. Yeah, yeah, the turnovers were certainly not a good thing. Two interceptions were thrown by Hurts, but um, couldn't get off the field. Couldn't get couldn't, get couldn't get him off the field. Uh, say uh, Dar- Darnold with those six touchdowns. Yeah, he had it. He had it spinning. Yeah. Yeah, part of it is uh, Seattle's offense attempted five field goals and made three of them. So there's five drives where the Seattle offense wasn't able to put it into the end zone. And, of course, on the other side, Chicago had six chances to score, but they turned them all into touchdowns. So big difference there in capitalizing on opportunities to score. Chicago is basically perfect, six Six touchdowns and six scoring drives in Seattle. Because you look at the punts, you, you see a score like this, you say, oh, the losing team also punted a lot. No, Seattle punted three times, Chicago punted four times. So there shouldn't be that much difference. But Seattle just didn't take advantage of opportunities to convert those to touchdowns. You know, three field goals out of five attempts. I think that kind of tells a lot of the story here. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. well, just think those five touchdowns, I mean, five field goal attempts, and that was five touchdowns. We're talking, you know, a uh, 42 35 game. Yeah, barn so, burner. In actuality, I take it back. Seattle is the best two and nine team in the league. They just got to score touchdowns. No, uh, got to finish, got to finish off the drives. That's about it. So, and the new defense, sir. Hold back a few of those scoring up. I mean, you don't want to get 42 points if you give it up 21 and score 35, you know. Yeah. It's got to stop the bleeding on that end. Yeah. Uh, last game for week 11, we have San Francisco hosting Green Bay. And as they took this one, 48 to 19, Dean. Yeah, the 49ers could do no wrong here. <clears throat> you know, Burrow completed 75% of his passes and 33 touchdown passes. Uh, Charlie's running game produced 196 yards rushing. I mean, this offense was pretty solid and pretty dominant and pretty, pretty balanced. And, uh, you know, the Green Bay offense had some moments too and scored 19 points, but 
you know, when you give up 49 points, it's tough to be competitive. And the 49ers did, I'd say, just about everything right on offense. You know, excellent running game, solid passing game, good balance, and, you know, almost 500 yards of offense, and they scored 48. I mean, you can't ask a team to do much more than that. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure Charlie is very uh, pleased with his, his uh, offensive performance in this game. All right. Mitch. Well, you know, Green Bay, you know, um, I, uh, well, you know, I was you know, thinking, hey, we're turning the corner, but to your point, Dean, uh, Green Bay just could not stop um, San Francisco at all. I mean, you look at Burrow, right? you look at the stat line, right? Um, I mean, <laughs> 75% completion percentage, obviously, that's strong. But he, but, but it was almost 20 yards per reception, you know, 15 completions for 290, right? That's almost 15. I mean, 20. I mean, that's 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 crazy. <laughs> I mean, there was some. I know Shuggy was having a fit because there were some times in the game where it was like bomb, 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 bomb all down the field. It's like man alive, where's the defense? But uh, um. You know, fun game to watch. Fun game to watch. So if you haven't watched it yet, I encourage you to go and and watch that game. But um, I think San Francisco uh, definitely, you know, made a statement. All right. So we have wrapped up the week eleven games, and uh, we're going to take our little pivot over to the middle segment here. And uh, the one thing that we had talked about in the pre-show as we were going over and looking at the overall standings uh, for the teams uh, this season, uh, we see some teams that, um, you know, need to do a lot of work. Uh, But then on the flip side, we see some teams that even though their records don't look that great, um, they have been very, very competitive uh, points for and points against, they're real tight. So their losses, you know, like one score or less. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit, or I'm going to have the guys talk about a little bit about the overall competition in the league, uh, new coaches uh, making the statement. Um, you know, it it's definitely makes the league um, better. Uh, to the point where you can't go in and just mail it in because even our top tier teams, um, with the exception of uh, New York, because New York, well, New York usually is one to two games, but there are some other teams out there that are usually in the top tier. They've they've taken a couple of beatings this season, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get this kicked off and see how you guys, uh, you know, how you feel about that. We're going to start with Mitch. Yeah, well, I already mentioned a little earlier. Um, one team that just really stands out to me this year that uh, doesn't have a winning record uh, is Denver. Uh, you know, rookie coach coming in. He's definitely made some fantastic uh, tools uh, for, for to help uh, all of us. So appreciate him coming in and, and doing that right off the bat. But then you look at the play on the field and, um, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, yeah, I get the I get the pleasure of playing them this week, so I'll get to see it firsthand. But I mean, you know, five and six, but 259 points scored, 191 points allowed. That's the number one scoring defense in the league um, by about you know 13 points. Uh, and then that 259 points scored. Um, granted, it's nowhere, you know, it's nowhere close to the Jets 344, but it's third in the AFC in scoring and, um, you know, in the upper half in scoring in, um, in, in the league. And so for a team with a rookie coach coming in, um, that, I mean, that's pretty darn amazing. Uh, usually you see that kind of a point differential and, you would think they'd be, you know, eight and three or, or something like that. But you look at their, you know, um, schedule this year, and you know they've had some, you know, blowout wins uh, against Seattle, New England, Jacksonville, uh, where they, you know, won by several several scores. But you know their losses this year, um, they lost by three to the Jets. 
lost by four to uh, uh, to Minnesota, lost by three to uh, you know to Vegas, um, lost by six to Green Bay. I mean, it's been super close losses, three to Los Angeles. So um, I, I have to say, uh, I'm not looking forward to playing them. You know, two times in the last five weeks, but um, they're one of the reasons why you know this league has been so tough this year. Uh, on top of you know, can you know the the rise uh, of the play of Pittsburgh. I mean, they're eight and three, so you know I'm not you know it you know it's not the same as like Denver is, but I mean Pittsburgh, no fluke there. Their defense is is super tough. Gives their offense a lot of opportunities to score, which, uh, like you said, they're second in the conference in, in scoring right now. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is it, it is tough. Uh, but with them coming on board, Denver playing strong, um, you know, uh, and then you know, team you know, like me and L.A., New York, you know, continuing to you know find ways to win. Um, it, oh man, this AFC for for me, this 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 has been no joke. And um, like I said, even teams that are below 500, you know, it's 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 tough to, you know, I mean, it's tough playing those teams too. So, Dean, what are you seeing? Well, one thing interesting about Denver is, is uh, the score between my team and Denver was 41 to 38. Yeah, overtime. Yeah. So when you it was close also, but. Yeah. When you look at that, 41 of those 190 points were scored in that game. That means in the other 10 games in which Denver was 5-5, five and five, yeah. the defense gave up an average of only 15 yards. 15 That's, points. 15 points. Yeah. yeah. Points per game in those other 10 games. Yeah. Um, the other thing we're seeing that shows how competitive the league is, Chicago and, and Washington all, both have four losses. Not only that, Chicago is a game – Behind Minnesota in in their division, Minnesota is leading the NFC West. Won five in a row. Yeah, yeah, they're hottest team in the league. They they won five and zero. Oh, although the Chargers have won five in a row too. They're equally as hot. Those are the two hottest teams in the league right now. And uh, yeah, you look at your division. Pittsburgh is the real deal at eight and three, and they've won some tough games. Your team, Houston, is a game behind. Chargers are two games behind. They're solid. Denver is five and six. Um, you know, again, Las Vegas is the best three and eight team in the league. Part of why they're three and eight is one close losses and two being in the same division as those other four teams that are in them that are all very competitive. And uh, the, the AFC East, you know, yes, the Jets are dominating at 10 and one, but you look at Indianapolis, New England, and Jacksonville, those. Teams have all been fairly competitive and all played some tough games. I mean, you know, none of those teams are having, you know, one of those seasons that you think, well, they're competing for the first round pick and they're going to play in the soccer ball. You know, they're all looking like the better teams this year than they've been in the past. But there's only, you know, you, you can only improve so much, but if everyone else is improving, the league gets more competitive. So someone still has to have the losing record and be the 18th team and they will get the first round pick. So it's, it's tough, and I think uh, maybe where you're seeing the, I guess, the underside of this degree of competitiveness and how tough it is to win games in the league, Seattle and Green Bay are struggling a bit with three and two losses, respectively, or wins rather, between them. So Philadelphia is four and seven. I don't know which way they're going to go. Are they going to finish four and 12? Are they going to finish nine and seven or somewhere in between? We don't know. I mean, some weeks, like last week, Philadelphia looked really strong, and other weeks, it looks like not so strong. So who knows? Um, my team and the Giants are five and six, and it's tough to say what what's going to happen with those teams. So, you know, the, these next five weeks are going, to, are going to answer a lot of these questions, and we'll see. Because Starting next week, we're going to be looking at the season three quarters finished, and we're going to start looking at playoff races in the different divisions. And so it will be interesting. We'll see see how things go. Okay. Um, 
I guess my take on it, I think I don't think I really have that much to add to what you guys have said. I mean, uh, definitely the competition's better. Um, you know, the new coaches are definitely uh, making a statement. Um, you know, I think a, a lot of people out there are trying, uh, you know, but you have a lot of things that goes on with them, um, you know, inside the game, outside the game. But um, I I guess you could probably say in this league, and I want to – I want some of the guys to think about this um, that have been in multiple leagues and then kind of compare this league to some of the others. The competition in here has gotten so much better where even the teams that are on the lower end, on the, you know, below 500, even though they're below 500 here, what would they be if they were in a different league? You understand what I'm saying? If it's a um, a different league, would they be a top tier team there? It's just something to kind of think about. And I think that that would be attributed to how intense the competition has gotten or how much better the competition has gotten here. Uh, but the utilities are out there and the the planning that a lot of coaches out there do, because you can definitely see that the coaches are doing a lot of planning, the upper echelon, they're doing a whole lot of planning. And even um, let's look at Vegas again, you know, their record, doesn't really, uh, yeah, like you said, the best three and eight team that's out there. You know, you know that they're they're planning because they're losing games by three points, four points. You know, maybe seven points or something like that. So, definitely the competition has gotten better, and I think um, by what we're doing now, they'll continue to get better. Uh, would you guys agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, definitely. All right, so that was uh, wrapping up the middle segment there. We are going to go ahead and pivot over to our last segment, uh, covering up the games for this week. Um, I think we had a pretty good topic on the overall status of the uh, competition in the league. And I think going into the Week 12 games, there's going to be a bunch of games that will expand upon that. I see only one pick them game um there are some games that has some really high spread numbers um it's going to be interesting to see how those play out and uh we're going to go ahead and run through these real quick and wrap it up so uh first game that we have for week 12 is the new york jets taking on the san francisco 49ers they are giving the Jets 10 and a half. We are going to start with Mitch to close this out. Yeah. Um, I, I think, well, I think this has the potential to be a, a very, a very good game uh, in San Francisco. I mean, if the 49ers can put together a game plan offensively like they did against Green Bay, I mean, they, they, they definitely could be a good game. Um, that said, I'm still taking the Jets. All right. Dean. Yeah, the, the 49ers played extremely well on offense last week, but they're not doing that against the Jets defense. And the Jets offense is still pretty solid. It could be a competitive game, but the Jets are going to win. All right. I'll concur with you guys as well as going with the Jets. Next game is our only pick em this week. We have the New England Patriots taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Dean. Yeah, Indianapolis has a chance of winning this week and evening their record of six and six, and I think they're going to be highly mo- they're going to be highly motivated to do that. So I'm going to put a lead pipe lock on this game. Indianapolis wins this game over New England. This is my lead pipe lock of the week. All right, Mitch. Well, neither team is good on the road, but uh, obviously, uh, that's Indianapolis. Uh, they've won one game on the road this year, but. I'm kind of like uh, similar to Dean. I think this is a game that I think Indianapolis is smelling a run here. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to take Indy. Ooh, okay. I'm taking Indy. Ah. Uh, all right. Uh, this one here is definitely a little bit interesting here. Indy is sitting at five and six. New England sitting at four and seven. Um, 
the points for are similar, points against are similar. Um, home, yeah, everything is pretty much even across the board. Um, I'm going to go opposite with you guys. I, I'm going to take Mox on this, and I'm going to see if Mox is going to uh, surprise us and pull something out of the hat. So, uh, And I'm going to shove my chips in on this one. So it's either going to be a uh, lead pipe lock or a lead pipe curse. I'm taking the pats this week. Well, I'll tell you, he's going to have to pull something out of somewhere. I don't know if it's a hat. but Yeah, something, something out, out of somewhere. somewhere. Yep. Yeah, so... Next game, we have Houston going into Denver to take on the Broncos, and they are giving the Oilers seven and a half. Dean. Yeah. This, this game, Houston is playing the best five and six team in the history of the league. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing an upset here. I think Denver wins this game at the moment very close. Who are you taking? I'm, I'm actually Denver wins an upset here at home, but it will be close. Okay. Coach. It could be like 17, 14 or something like that. Okay. Coach, what do you got for your team this yeah. week? I mean, you know, heck, I mean, uh, I could see that happening too. Uh, I mean, most of Denver's games uh, have been, you know, tight, tight games. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I have – you know, I'm seven and four, but I have not played the best uh, at, at times. And so, um, you know, I'm looking to uh, straighten a few things out this week. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take Houston, but, you know, it is not going to be easy. I'll just leave it at that. All right. Um, I think this is definitely two good coaches. Um, obviously, um Brian's been definitely doing his planning and studying with his utilities and everything else going. Um, Mitch, we know Mitch is going to do his plan. He probably has his guys on the field right now as this show is being recorded. So out there practicing. So uh, <laughs> I I think it, it's going to be a close one. It's um, I'm, I'm not believing in that spread at all, but I'm going to lean this week towards Houston. Uh, next game up, we have Washington hosting L.A., and they are giving Washington four and a half. Mitch. Man, I tell you what, talk about a uh, big game for, uh, you know, two coaches that, you know, typically find themselves in that, you know, strong in stronger position. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I hope we can see this on Friday Night Lights. Uh, I think this is going to be a fun one to watch. Um, I am going to go with the Redskins to uh, knock off the five-win streak Chargers this week. Okay. Dean. Well, as we covered in the second segment, Minnesota and Los Angeles are the hottest teams in the league with five-game winning streaks. And we know how good Steve is at tanking, so I think the Chargers continue that winning streak and they win the game at Washington this weekend. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple. I'm going to call for the Chargers uh, for the upset this week as well. Next game, we have Green Bay hosting Philly, and they are giving Philly six and a half. Dean. Yeah, we don't know which Philadelphia team we're going to see on the field this week. But what I do know is that after that game against the 49ers last week, Green Bay is going to pull together and play much stronger, and Green Bay is going to win a close game at home. Mitch. Well, since he has been uh, every week a participant in Friday Night Lights, uh, I've got to go with uh, Green Bay and the Shug. And you know what? I'm going to put the chips in here and make it a lead pipe lock. Okay. Just to make Friday Night Lights even more exciting. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to call. I'm going to call for an upset. 
I'm going to call for the Packers to steal this one away from Philly, I would say, by three. Next game up, we have Pittsburgh hosting Atlanta. They are giving Pittsburgh ten and a half. Mitch. Uh, well, I'll just say uh, good luck, Dean, with this one. Uh, <laughs> these guys are not easy. <laughs> so, oh, good luck. Uh, at home, Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm, I'm going with Pittsburgh. I think Atlanta will will show up and play for sure. Um, I think Pittsburgh though will will um, keep Atlanta scoring down enough to to win. Dean. Yeah, it's almost like my team does better on the road this season than playing at home. I mean, things happen when we play at home. We have three running backs over the ball away, and we have other strange things happen and. You know, field goals get missed, and I don't know what what happens at home this season. But on the road, it's it's like it's like home away from home, and we play well on the road. So uh, we're going to uh, do the impossible and and beat Pittsburgh this weekend. All right. Uh, well, the rest of the AFC West would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they would appreciate. It. I'm gonna keep it simple, though. I'm sure they would appreciate it, but I don't think it's gonna happen this week. Uh, I am taking Pittsburgh over Atlanta this week, even though I know that Dean is probably doing the same thing Mitch is doing right now and has his guys out there practicing as we are doing this. So, but I'm gonna take Pittsburgh this week. Next game up, we have the New York Giants hosting the Chicago Cardinals. They are giving the Cardinals 13 and a half. Dean. Well, this is tough. And uh, I think the Giants will uh, have some moments to play stronger than they did last week. But, you know, this is Chicago, and Chicago is a game behind in the division. And Austin is highly motivated to. Uh, put his team through maximum numbers of practices. So uh, I'm picking Chicago to win this game on the road. All right. Mitch. Well, as we learned during the first segment of the show, I mean, Chicago really got lucky to come out of the win against Seattle. It was, you know, those uh, five field goal attempts at a touchdown. Otherwise it was a different game. So, Oh, man, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe Chicago uh, bumbles it up here. But the biggest issue I have is I don't know if it's going to be the 50-point-a-game uh, Giants or the Goose Egg Giants showing up this week. So I'm going to go with Chicago. Go with Chicago. All right. I'm going to keep mine simple. I'm going to go with Chicago this week as well. Uh, I think they're going to start, too assert themselves as we come down to the final weeks of the season. Next game up, we have Jacksonville hosting Mitch's Minnesota Vikings. I mean, oh, the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> and they are giving the Vikings nine and a half. Mitch. And, well, I mean, Jacksonville is at home, and they do have a 750 winning percentage at home this season. Uh, and, uh, you know, Minnesota's only 500 on the road. So maybe this is going to be a tougher game than what it looks like. But all that, I'm taking the Vikings. You know. All right. Dean. Yeah, this could be a somewhat competitive game. I mean, much of the last week, I think Minnesota wins by at least a field goal here and continues to be – continues to win. Okay. I'll keep mine simple here. I'm going to take Minnesota for the victory as well. Final game for week 12, we have the Las Vegas Raiders hosting Seattle. They are giving the Raiders four and a half. Dean. Well, when you look at the current power rankings on the standings page, you see rank 17th is Las Vegas and rank 18th is Seattle. So it's kind of really a kind of cruel mashup that those two teams have to play this season, uh, this week rather. But uh, I think the team is going to have, a, have an edge here, and and, and uh, I think the Raiders are going to win a close game. All right. Mitch. 
Yeah, well, we've got the best three and eight team in the league versus the best two and nine team. We got a team with a five game losing streak and a team with an eight game losing streak. The home team has won one game at home and the road team has won no games on the road. So uh, I think it will end in a zero zero tie. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, 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 I really don't know. I, uh, I I'll 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 root for Mark, but uh, I'll say home team wins, and it you know could be seventeen to thirteen. I I, I don't know, but I'll say that Las Vegas wins close. Well, I think there'll be some fans going out there to Vegas, not to you know to see if um, if. Uh, the beatdown is going to continue, but despite all that, I'm still going to keep plugging away and obviously go Hawks. So, all right, we have wrapped up week 12. Uh, our predictions um, also coming up for our next show will be at that three quarter turn. So, it'll be a lot of uh, things starting to shake out as we start seeing teams fighting for those playoff spots. Um, so as we come to wrap this up, we're going to go around the table one more time. Uh, Dean, any final words? No, I just say that hope you're uh, hope you're running back on giving away 18 fumbles every game. Otherwise, everyone in their games and uh, should be an interesting week of games. And like you said, we'll be quarters of the way through the season and start to focus a little bit more on on the uh, playoff races next week and beyond. All right. Mitch. Yeah, well, you know, since they banned it in baseball, I hear there's a good deal on spider tax that you could probably get for your running backs this week, yeah, Dean. So I want to look into that for their hands. But uh, other than that, let's, uh, let's keep this rolling. Uh, come watch games Friday night. We uh, we'll, should start somewhere around 10 Eastern. Get your PPPs in a little early if you would like to ensure that you have your game uh, streamed live uh, with the group uh, Friday nights. And if you haven't been joining us, come join. We have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, a lot of uh, uh, camaraderie, and uh, a lot of fun. So uh, other than that, Mark, let's get it. <laughs>